Hello class. Today we're going to learn about graphing and writing systems of inequalities. And we're going to start off with a system of three linear inequalities. So to graph this first inequality, notice that the y variable is missing. So remember that when you have an inequality or an equation that starts with an x, it's going to be a vertical line. Okay, and this vertical line is going to go through the point negative 3 on the x-axis. So going to negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 3, Notice, since it's an inequality, we need to check to see if we have a solid line or a dashed line. Well, since it's missing an equal part, we're going to put a dashed line at negative 3. And remember what I told you in the last video. Do solutions exist on a dashed line? No. See, if you plug negative 3 into this inequality, is negative 3 greater than negative 3? No. So none of these points satisfy this inequality or make it true. Okay? So it's greater than, so technically we would shade to the right, but let's put in a test point. So let's choose my favorite test point, 0, 0. So if I plug in 0, the x-coordinate, into this inequality is 0 greater than negative 3. Yes. So we would be shading to the right since it works. And as you can see, if I choose a point to the left of negative 3, negative 4, is negative 4 greater than negative 3? No. So remember, to use a test point to verify where your shading goes. The shading represents the solutions. Don't forget that. Okay, moving on to the next one. Okay, so here is a linear inequality where we have a y and an x. So remember, in order to graph a in linear inequality, we need to be in the form y equals mx plus b. So we're starting off by graphing the y-intercept, which in this case is 0. Okay. And the slope here is going to be a negative 1. So since it's an integer, we need to put it over 1 so that we can get a rise over run. So we're going to go down 1, run to the right 1. So down 1, right 1. And we just keep following that pattern until we feel like we have enough points to draw a line. And actually, let me change colors here. Um, we have an equal sign, so what do you think? Correct. So when I ask you questions and I pause, please make sure you are answering them in your head what you think the answer is. So it's going to be a solid line. Let's use blue for this one. This equation, we'll use blue. And it says less than. So we would shade below the line. Uh-oh. We, we could use our test point, but we already know the test point does work because it's on a solid line. Um, so we're going to have to choose another point here to, to uh, test. So let's just choose the point um, negative 1, negative 1. So let's just choose this point right here, negative 1, negative 1. Right, so negative 1 goes in for y, negative 1 goes in for x. So is negative 1 less than or equal to 1? Yes, it fulfills the less than. Negative 1 is less than 1. So, of course, we are going to shade below with our blue pencil. 
If you don't have colored pencils, remember I do have them available for you to use in the classroom. Don't know where they are, just ask me. All right, so, so far, the solution to these two linear inequalities is this overlapping area, this border, but not this border. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Well, this one's in standard form, which means we have to change it to slope-intercept form for easy graphing. So we're going to start by moving this negative one-half x over to the other side. Let me rewrite it down here so you can see all the steps. So this term is going to get canceled out. So a minus is the same as a negative, so it's going to come down as a negative y. Put your x term first, because we're going to slope-intercept form, plus 3. Okay, so now we have to get rid of this negative. So we're going to divide everything by negative 1. So re recall in the last video, um, I'm not sure if my second video, if I brought mention to it, but when you divide by a negative 1 or a negative number, or if you multiply by a negative number, the inequality is going to switch. So we're going to have a negative 1 half x minus 3. Okay, so I paused the video so I could write that down. You should do the same thing at this point. This little rule right here, unless you know it by heart. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this. I changed my color to red. We're going to start with the y-intercept, which is negative 3. Put a dot there. And we're going to apply the negative to the top number, but not the bottom. So we're going to go down 1, right 2. Okay, once you feel like you have enough points, you are going to make your line. We have an equal part, so it's going to be solid. Okay, and it's a greater than symbol, so we're going to shade above. But let's do, go ahead and do a test plot. A test point here so let's pick zero zero so we're testing zero zero to see if it's a solution or not sorry about that I was off the screen there for a minute so I plugged in zero 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 in for y zero in for x and we get zero is greater than or equal to negative three and that is true so we shade above the line where zero, 0, is. All right, so where does the solution lie for this system of three linear inequalities? Well, we have to look to where we see some black, some red, and some blue overlapping. And then that area right there, you want to take one of your colored pencils or your pen, regular pencil and you just want to shade it real dark. You got to shade that area real dark. That way I know and you know that we know where the solution is located. If I'm not sure, if I can't tell, you didn't make it dark enough. So remember, all the points inside the shaded region are possible solutions or, yeah, for this system of linear inequalities, including the border, the solid borders, but not the dashed line, and not where they intersect because the dashed line exists there. And so those two points will not satisfy this first inequality.
Okay, next, go ahead and pause the video, write down, write, um, see if you can make a graph of this. Um, here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis, okay? So what we want to do here is we want to write a system of inequalities from the graph. So what I'm going to teach you real quick here is how to write the line, and then we're going to write um, the inequality. So always start, when writing a line, always start with the y-intercept. So this y-intercept is 2, positive 2. I always start moving from right to left. Start with the y-intercept. Then put your x in. Next we need the slope. So you're going to pick two points on the line, pretty points. They go through intersection points, easy to count. So down 1, 2, 3. So down, three, right, one. And there is your slope. Okay, and now I'm gonna put my Y here. It's a dashed line, so it does not get an equal part. And this is shaded below the graph, so we're going to use a less than symbol on this. A less than symbol is below. Again, if you're not sure, Put in a test point in for y and x and see if what well, if uh, like 0 0 is 0 going to be less than or greater than or equal to 2 because this would end up being 0 it would be less than 2 so we put a less than symbol there so next line it's right here it's a horizontal line so the y-intercept, again, we start, it's going to be negative 2. Put in the x. Slope, well, there is no rise. Okay, it's flat. It only has a run. So the rise is 0. And the run, it doesn't matter what, you know, from this point to this point, Let's just go 0 to 1, okay? And 0 divided by 1 is 0. 0 times x is 0. So we're really only going to end up with a negative 2 over here. All right, the shading is above. So we're going to use the greater than symbol. It's a solid line. So we need an equal part and then the y. So simplifying this inequality, it's going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So these two inequalities represent this graph. I have a minute or so left. Let's talk about solutions. Remember, it's where it overlaps. So if I gave you the point 3, 4, is that a solution? Yes or no? Well, you would go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the answer would be no. This is, point is not a solution to the system because it lies outside of the double shaded region. It is a solution to one of them but not both of them. Okay, let's pick another point. Negative 4, 0. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. So this lies in the double shaded region, so yes, this would be a solution. One more. Let's do uh, 0, neg uh, 0, 2. So that point is going to be right here. And the answer would be, what do you think? No. Why not? Tell me tomorrow. Tell me. Have a good night. I'll see you in class.